NDT is an acronym for a class of some of the most popular thyroid medications that exist. You've heard of these medications even if you don't recognize them by this name. This class includes medications like Armour Thyroid, NP Thyroid, and even the newest called Adthyza. By the way, Nature Thyroid and WP Thyroid are also included on this list, but they remain unavailable, so we're going to ignore them for now. Despite being the oldest thyroid medications to exist, and despite the fact that thyroid patients have a clear preference for them over synthetic alternatives, doctors still remain hesitant to prescribe them. And that would be okay if they had good reasons, but they don't. Which is why today we're going to bust some myths about this class of thyroid medication so the next time you go into your doctor's office requesting a change in thyroid medication, you can walk in with confidence and the knowledge needed to bat down any dubious claims made by your doctor. Claim number one is that taking NDT will cause bone problems and or heart problems. In my opinion, this is either pure fear-mongering or it represents an absolute misunderstanding of how these thyroid medications and how thyroid physiology works. Because NDT contains a combination of both T4 and T3 thyroid hormones compared to the synthetic alternatives which only contain T4. Doctors know full well that T3 is much more powerful than T4, which is why when they prescribe T3, they give it in much smaller doses. Level thyroxine, for instance, is usually dosed at a range of about 100 micrograms per day, but lyothyronine, which only contains T3, is usually dosed at around 5 micrograms per day. This is done because many doctors are under the false impression that the healthy thyroid produces about 95% T4 and 5% T3. And because NDT contains a static ratio of about 83% T4 to about 17% T3, they believe that taking NDT will provide too much T3 to the body. But there's a big problem with this. Physiologically speaking, the thyroid gland does not produce a ratio of 95-5 like they think. In fact, it's a ratio closer to 80-20. And we have studies like this to prove that. That covers the T3 issue, but what about the bone loss and the heart problems? Is that true? This is also a non-issue because studies have consistently shown that long-term use of T3 is not associated with atrial fibrillation or osteoporosis, which is bone loss, as long as it is dosed appropriately. So even if you are an 80-year-old woman who wants to take armor thyroid, as long as you're not taking too much of it, it's not going to cause the bone loss or the heart problems that your doctor will tell you it does. And yet, unfortunately, this is exactly what many patients are told when they ask for it. Claim number two is that newer synthetic medications are somehow superior to NDT. The doctors who make this claim will also say that T4, like level thyroxine, is more stable and has a longer half-life, so it is safer for thyroid patients to take. They also claim that T3 isn't needed because the body can just create the T3 that it needs from the T4 that it gets from the level thyroxine. This sounds good in theory, but it doesn't work in the real world. We know from studies like this that patients who are taking T4-only thyroid medications, like level thyroxine, have much lower T3 levels compared to people who have a healthy and functioning thyroid gland. This indicates that the body does indeed have a need for extra T3, which is why it should also come as no surprise to anyone listening to this that the thyroid produces about 30 micrograms of T3 each and every day. Six micrograms of this comes from the thyroid gland directly, and the remainder comes from peripheral thyroid conversion. What about the side effect claim? Is there any truth to that? Technically, this claim is true, but it's totally irrelevant. T4 does have a much longer half-life than T3, so it will cause fewer side effects. But it just so happens to also leave thyroid patients with residual symptoms because it's so weak. And this is one of the main reasons why study after study shows that thyroid patients who take level thyroxine and those who take NDT prefer the NDT. It's been my experience that most thyroid patients would rather accept some small increased risk of side effects when using NDT rather than taking level thyroxine and continuing to experience low thyroid symptoms like weight gain, fatigue, hair loss, and so on. And if you're someone who is not okay with this trade-off, well then that's fine, just keep taking level thyroxine. Claim number three is that NDT is not FDA approved. This one is actually true, but again, irrelevant. The doctors trying to make this claim are also trying to underhandedly suggest that because it's not FDA approved, it's somehow dangerous. But the truth is that NDT has been around since 1890 
and was exclusively used to treat low thyroid conditions all the way up into the 70s. The FDA wasn't even regulating the effectiveness of medications until around 1972. And because NDT was in use for 80 years before this date, it was simply grandfathered in. It wasn't required to prove efficacy like a newer drug would be required to because it already proved that it was effective for decades. So again, this claim is irrelevant. Claim number four is that NDT is old fashioned. While it is true that sometimes newer things are better than older things, this just isn't the case with NDT versus level thyroxine. The reason is that there have been no innovations in thyroid medication management since NDT was created. All thyroid medications contain bioidentical thyroid hormones every single one. This means that the T4 that is found in NDT is the exact same compound that is found in level thyroxine. And the same T3 that is found in NDT is also found in lyothyronine. The source is different, yes, but the chemical structure is identical to the thyroid hormone that the body would produce naturally. And guess what? This is totally fine. The only alternative here would be to create a Frankenstein-like thyroid hormone, similar to what oral contraceptives are to progesterone, and use this in the place of bioidentical T4 and T3. But there's absolutely no reason to do this because non-bioidentical hormones are foreign to the body and often cause more harm than good. And because complete symptomatic control can be obtained with the existing bioidentical hormones that exist, there's no need to create new thyroid medications. But the key here is that in order to feel better, you must be dosed appropriately. And if you are someone who is not feeling well, it may not be a medication problem, it may be a dosing problem. Claim number five is that taking NDT will cause mad cow disease. This claim is ridiculous because firstly, the majority of NDT comes from pigs, not from cows. And secondly, there has never been a reported case of mad cow disease from anyone taking NDT. The only case of mad cow disease in the United States came from a cow that was imported from Canada. So there's no need to worry about this. Claim number six is that taking NDT will increase thyroid antibodies. There might be some small truth to this one, but it's probably overblown. The idea here is that because NDT comes from an animal source, it contains animal proteins that may interact with the human immune system. So if you're somebody who already has a compromised immune system, like somebody who has Hashimoto's thyroiditis, then taking natural desiccated thyroid may theoretically make your immune system worse. In theory, this does make sense, but in the real world, it doesn't hold up when you look at the numbers. We don't have exact numbers, but approximately 10 to 20% of people with hypothyroidism are taking NDT medications instead of level thyroxine. In real terms, this means about three to five million people in the United States. We also know that statistically speaking, about 70 to 90% of people with hypothyroidism have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So looking at these numbers, we can say with a high degree of certainty that millions of people with Hashimoto's are taking NDT right now. And do we see millions of cases of patients with Hashimoto's with elevated thyroid antibodies who suddenly get worse when they start taking these medications? Nope, not even close. But I can tell you from personal experience that I have seen at least one person react in this way. So while rare, it may happen. In my opinion though, the risk is not sufficient to make the recommendation that nobody should use NDT. Claim number seven is that NDT is in a real thyroid medication because it can be purchased over the counter. This stands from a serious misunderstanding between over-the-counter thyroid glandular supplements and NDT, which is a prescription-only medication. Thyroid glandulars are bovine, meaning cow, based ingredients that are available for purchase over-the-counter and typically do not contain active thyroid hormones. NDT, on the other hand, is a prescription-only thyroid medication, which usually comes from pigs and contains standardized amounts of T4 and T3 in every single dose. They are not the same thing. They come from completely different sources and they contain completely different ingredients. But of course, if someone isn't educated, they may confuse them. But if they make this simple mistake, this probably isn't the person you wanna to listen to when they make recommendations. All of this said, should you run out and make the change from whatever you're taking now to NDT? But if you are someone who is struggling to feel well on whatever you're taking, then I'd recommend checking out this video next.